back on Upstream Podcast. Today I have a special guest, Katie Olja. Um, I actually live pretty close to you and recently have been doing a lot more with you and your husband, Justin, mm -hmm. working out in the mornings, talking about business, yep. family, life, marriage, all that fun stuff. And I thought it'd be really fun to have you on the podcast here to have the conversation here on the mics and not just in the gym. And I'm really excited to see what's on your heart and the Holy Spirit has for you. But just give a little intro of who you are and a little background. Okay. <laughs> I always think it's so funny when people are like, tell about who you are. Because there's like 14 things I could say. Um, I love entrepreneurship. I love business. I was a personal trainer. So I love fitness and holistic health. Um, I run an interior design company right now, so I'm all about creativity. Um, and I also am studying for my PhD in natural medicine. So <laughs> there's a lot of different veins and irons in the fire right now. But that's a lot. Yeah. But the biggest, I think the biggest core of like who I am is I just like creating space for people to be who they are without any barriers in the way. And so every single vein that I'm in is kind of heading toward that. So that's good. I, the, the, the topics we've been talking about at the gym have been really interesting because I feel like every time we come in and it's different people, it's usually either your brother and me or Justin, we just kind of like rotate and Ashley comes in every now and then. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because the dynamic of who's there is how the conversation kind of goes, right? Yeah. And so me and yeah. you, we think a lot alike on, yeah. on a lot, like <laughs> on a lot of things. And so when it was just like kind of me and you sometimes working out, I noticed the conversation would go one way. And then when I'm with Justin, it goes completely different. And so yeah, welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I have that kind of too with Leah, who I'm married to is we're very different as well. And it's funny when we're talking because we're so wired the same. I'm like, yeah, that of course that makes sense. And then you're like, oh, hold on a second. The other counterpart is thinking from a different area. And I've got to work <laughs> out with Justin a lot lately. And so it's it's been fun, like hearing him talk and you talk. And what do you, what do you and Justin like? from a marriage standpoint, like what do you guys like focus on right now? And what do you see like that is, is like a necessary like need for the Holy spirit to kind of come in and like to work on and stuff in marriage. Yeah, specifically? man. I think the biggest thing for me, I'll talk about my side cause he's doing his own thing too with the Lord, you know, um, on my side, I think, it's really understanding that we're not the same and it's okay that we're not the same. Cause like, I mean, I think me and you are very similar in the, like, we're very achievement minded. We're going to go after what we want, like all risk, no worry about like what could happen. <laughs> and if we fail, we fail. But Justin is not wired like that. And I was actually telling Ashley earlier, he always talks about how like I'm the gas pedal and he's the brakes. <laughs> and so um, like, I've just been really learning like, God wired him that way and then God gave him to me and that's a beneficial thing. And so um, learning to like respect that about him when he is slower to make decisions or, you know, he just spends more time with the Lord to make sure that what he's going to do is right. That used to make me so mad and I would see it as like, you just need to be like less afraid and you just need to go after stuff. But I think I'm learning now it's actually like a wisdom that God has given him and it's something that I need in my life. Yeah, because. Sure. I'm wired the same way. Yeah. Like you just point me in a direction and I'm like done. Yeah. And I don't even know what I'm doing. Right. And yeah. it's like, let's just go. And Leah's wired that way. Like Justin of like, I need to like pray on this more. We need to like think about this and then right. get some understanding. And that balance is really healthy. And I was just talking to this, to Leah the other night about how I'm so thankful she's in my life and how she is as a person and the personality and character she is that fits my like opposite mm -hmm. and how God brought us together because like what you just said, I'm the gas too. And she's kind of the break and yeah. you need both because sometimes like when you're going crazy and you get this, I, I, I go crazy all the time. You can do it. If you don't have that break, you can just crash and the crash can be bad. Yeah, it can. And it has before because like, it's, it's really interesting because you're the husband, right? So there is a different dynamic with you and Leah than there is for me and Justin because I have another level of like needing to respect his leadership and like slow down if he wants to slow down. And I think it's probably a little bit easier for you to just like steamroll and be like, <laughs> nope, this is what we're doing. Um, so it's been really, it's like challenging because I can steamroll too. And I think it's a little bit worse for me because he, as the man, kind of needs the respect and stuff. So I'm just really learning how to like, slow down and be like, okay, I trust you. Like, I trust that you hear from the Lord, even if it's different than how I hear. And like, 
if you want to slow down, that's not going to be, I'm not going to miss out on what God has for me. It's actually going to be better. It's going to be more in his timing than if I was just going to run full steam ahead. Yeah. No, that I never really thought of that. Like, cause since I'm the male and like how you're a female, like in the household, that would be so different from those personalities, but you're right. Like I can see how that would change the dynamic completely in a sense yeah. sometimes yeah. where you're like, it, it is very easy <laughs> for me to seem real. And, but it comes with a negative part big time to it. Cause recently I've done some stuff where I'm just like, yeah, we're just doing this. We're going to go here. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to be here. And she's like, hold on a second. Like, where am I in this picture? Yeah. And it's so easy for me to just go down that and just run it over. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I've done it multiple times. I'm getting very, or I'm getting a lot better at seeing it sooner, but I'm still doing it. I just see it quicker and I can apologize quicker where it's not as much hurt and not as much frustration yeah but boy it's so easy to go yeah. steamroll oh yeah i mean it really is for me too <laughs> i think it's the personality type a little bit which like when you're a leader and when you know yourself and you're like not afraid it's almost like i just don't care what anyone else thinks and that's not good in a marriage <laughs> you know what i mean like i need to care what he thinks and i need to like partner with him and then when we partner with god it's like that that cord of three strands that is yeah. e easily broken you know so it's going to be so much more powerful I just have to get that through my achiever mind that not doing it right now doesn't mean that I can't do it or that it's not going to be good or that I'm going to miss out, you know? Yeah, I'm um, I'm really learning about rest and I wanted to talk to you about this because I just hit my personal record on benching at 250 yeah. and I'm and you saw this because I started working out with you from day one in last October mm -hmm. and I'm like gung ho every day. You want me in the gym? I will be there before everybody, right? And and yeah. I remember the first week, Monday through Friday, I was like dead. <laughs> and you're like, "Hey, you want to come Saturday?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I will be there." And and I'm I'm just remember seeing Justin like, "That's a bad idea." And I'm like, yeah. "No, but I'm gonna be there." And so recently, I've been just cutting back, and I actually got stronger. And I'm not used to working out, and I don't like you. I ask you all these questions, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, point me. In a, you have to like show me what to do. Like, if yeah. I go to a gym, I'm like the guy that like. Like, I'm just going to do curls because I'm like, I don't know what to do. And so, but I've really learned from that aspect to take it into my, my spiritual life too. Is like, I, I really felt God was telling me that day, like, you're going to grow so much more when I'm just resting in him and, and just being a lot more calm and yeah. not, not trying to be like, oh, I need to read, you know, the Bible five hours a day. And I need to like really meditate and pray for four or five hours and be like, no, like, I've really felt God told me like, you need to take 20 minutes a day and pray. That's what I'm, that's like what I want from you every day. Take 20 minutes. Yeah. And I've prayed about this a lot. Like, is that, I feel like it's not enough. And he's like, no, you're, he's like, you do 20 minutes right now in this season. That's what I want from you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really learning, like when I'm in that praying time for 20 minutes, it's really hard. Really? It's, to stop. Re it's really hard to stop. It's so hard to stop, but I'm learning. So I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on like the whole fitness thing to your spiritual, like the importance of rest. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, I am all about that. <laughs> Not about rest. I'm all about the connection between the the spiritual and the physical and the mental, right? Because we, Justin always says like we're a three pronged stool. So like you have your spirit, your soul, and your body. And if one of those is broken, you can't use the stool anymore. And like, that's how we are as people. But I think people are usually really good at one of the areas and they're not necessarily so good at the other two, but truthfully, like there's principles in every single one, they're all interconnected, you know? So even looking at like the fitness example with, um, working out, like, you know, as a personal trainer, I know all the science behind rest and why, like you actually can't reach your full potential if you're working out every day because you're straining those muscles. They never have time to repair themselves. Um, but that same principle goes into the spiritual as well as like, if you're constantly striving, um, you actually can't get to where you want to go because it's all, I think really the spiritual principle is it's all on you. And that's not how the kingdom works at all. You know, like his, his yoke is supposed to be easy and his burden is light, but us achievers, cause I do the same thing. If it's to be, it's up to me. Right. Yeah. And that's anti-kingdom, which is a really hard pill for me to swallow. But, um, he's, he's just been teaching me so much about rest and, and all of that stuff as well in the spiritual side, because, um, when we take a step back, that gives him a chance to step forward. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like, he's going to take us way farther than we could ever take ourselves specifically in the spiritual, but also just, I mean, in every area of life in business and fitness and all of those things. So he's just been showing me like, um, 
just the importance of that. And he, you know, the Bible says the only thing you're supposed to strive for, it actually says strive to enter rest. Like that's the only thing you're actually supposed to be striving for is resting. That's crazy. Cause like for me, I have a hard time. I was just telling this to Ashley actually this week of how like I have a really hard time when things are calm and I'm like, it, and I know it's not right. Like I should yeah. be like it. I should have peace. There should be calm days. There should mm-hmm. like, it's like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, yeah. I feel like I'm not being productive. And I'm like, I don't want that anymore. Cause like, it's yeah. actually like, I should be really good in the peace and the calm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like I just love the go this and that and kind of the craziness. And I'm yeah. like, you know, but at the end of the day, it's like, that just wears you out so much. It does. And you know, it, it, it's wearing you out because it's not how you were created to be. Like anytime you're stepping outside of alignment, it's not going to have the favor and the grace and the power that it's supposed to have, you know, because yeah. you were created to, to, to like co-partner with God. Right. And I'm preaching to myself, like we were not created to like have to do everything on our own. And that's so like, it's honestly so toxic and it stems from something somebody taught us when we were a kid right like if you want to go into like the formative years and Mm -hmm. at some point you and i as achievers we both learned like we're not good enough unless we're performing yeah and so i know exactly where that came from because i've done a lot of work in that area but um for me specifically but yeah it's at some point somebody taught us that and so now we take that same belief system and put it on god and it's like oh if, if if you're i'm not worth talking to you or looking at you or being with you unless i'm serving you you know what i mean which is just religion and yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been really good and healing for me. Cause like I said, it's probably something from my childhood. I, I, it, I, it sounds like you've gone down that and done a lot of healing with that. Yes. I, I have not yet. I need to go <laughs> down ready. and get delivered <laughs> Buckle up. of some of this. I know lately I feel like I've been on this fast track of so many different things in my life where I'm just like, God is moving me in a direction. And he's like, it, it you got to get like leveled up buddy. Yeah. And it's just happening day after day and week after week and i'm but i asked for it i was like lord like let's just get it done at once and man you really got to be careful because what you ask for i mean he's probably gonna show up and do what you ask for sometimes and i asked to just be like hey mold me let's go and let's just get it done with and i'm like some days i'm just like what did i why did i ask for that (laughs) yeah yeah it's crazy um intense you mentioned about like leadership in the household and stuff and um I've been really thinking about the importance of leadership and there was this, I actually just made like a a, a video, a clip the other day. I wanted to see what your thoughts are is I was watching Tim Ross and he had this thing about um, it. I I might butcher the line a little bit, but it's basically like for a mentor and like people over you, he said like, if you are not willing to be corrected, you cannot be protected. And it really hit me because like in leadership roles and mentor roles of people, whether it's the church, whether it's a family or a business, or it's just simply a mentor, if you're not willing to look when someone's pouring into your life and trying to really help you to correct things in your life, they cannot actually protect you from the things that are going to happen from the consequences that will follow your actions. Yeah. And that just smacked me this week. So when you said like leadership earlier, I was thinking you know, it's really, really tough to be in a leadership role and people do not realize it when they have never been in one Mm -hmm. or they aren't really in one too much. And what are your thoughts of like, cause you said you're in business and you, you know, you're married and, and I know you're part of, um, altar call here at storehouse and you have this really cool event that I want to talk to you about you in a little bit that's coming up and you're in a leadership role and you're starting to get in. And I'm sure, I don't know, but I'm assuming you've kind of probably had some tough things being in roles that you've probably offended people, right? Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, the first, one of the first businesses I started was a life coaching business. It was a spirit, soul, body health coaching, but it was life coaching. Um, and so that's kind of the lens I view everything like all relationships. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just have always fallen into the leadership role, even when I wasn't a believer, which was really bad because I led people the wrong way. But, um, Yeah. Being a leader, I feel like even in Christian circles, um, 
people just put so much expectation on you and then they have all their own stuff, right? Everybody has their own mm -hmm. trauma or whatever. And so they're looking at you through a lens of what's happened to them in the past. And so then when you say something, even with good intentions, or you try and help them, or you're like, hey, you know, pointing out a blind spot, whatever it is, they're looking at you through this narrative that they've already written because they that's what they've been taught. You know, and it's really hard if you don't actively go and undo those things, you don't just naturally realize like, oh, I'm looking at you because my mom said this thing about me. I'm now putting that on you or whatever it is, you know, so there have definitely been times where I've been with like Holy Spirit, so in the spirit, so correct, so loving and so kind. And then they still throw all their stuff on me yeah. and say like, oh, you're manipulative. Oh, you did this stuff. Oh, you're, you're just trying to attack me. You're trying to control me, whatever it is, because that's the narrative that they are like looking at their life through. And so I think as a leader, it's just really important to remember like broken people are, you know, they're broken and they can't see, they legitimately can't see the logic of what you're saying or the kindness of what you're saying. They just can't until they have an experience with the Holy Spirit. And so I've really had to just let a lot of those situations go and just continually be like, okay, I'm just releasing mercy instead of judgment. And like, I have to trust that the Lord's going to deal with them and that my yeah. character isn't going to be you know, attacked because somebody's looking at me with their own, you know, bad lens or whatever. Yeah, but. I I've struggled a lot with this particular area because I wanted to be understood. Yeah, and even to this day, I still want to be understood. Yeah. Who I mean, who doesn't? But and it's interesting. I've processed this a lot the last few weeks. Of I have no problem being misunderstood by people I don't know. Like I have no problem, but people I know and care about it's really tough for me in a leadership role to do things that will come across completely misunderstood, but I know it needs to be done mm -hmm. and I freeze. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. So the Lord told me something that might help you. Oh, hit me. <laughs> um, he's told me one time because I was really messed up. There was one girl, even at storehouse, there was, uh, there was somebody that, um, really came at me and attacked my character to my face. And I didn't even know how to respond. I was just like, what? And I had to take it to the Lord for like a long time and like really release it. And something he told me in that time where I was just like, I have to give this up to you because I can't be mad about this forever. Yeah. Um, something he said that just dropped in my spirit was generals don't apologize to foot soldiers. Mm. And that's like a very hard leadership truth. Cause like you want to be liked. Everyone wants to be liked, especially if you have, you know, something in you that's like needs man's attention or whatever, you know, you can take that to the Lord. But, um, yeah, as a general in the kingdom, you don't owe people explanation, you know, you don't owe people who are supposed to be under you explanation. And like a CEO can't spend his time talking to his like cashiers about why he's making the decisions that he's making. Yeah. You know, it's just then everything would fall apart. So, yeah, yeah. that's that's really good. I really received that because I saw another quote not long ago. Lions don't con concern themselves with the opinions of sheep. Yeah, same, same exact same, idea. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it's something I really have to work on. Yeah, I mean, I do too. I'm not <laughs> just yeah, so you yeah. Know. <laughs> but um, every I think everybody does. Everybody has that thing that's like, I want to be loved, I want to be accepted. But in when you're in a leadership position, you just have to lay that at the altar, mm -hmm. you know, and be like, you know what? I know that the Lord accepts me, and I know that He sees me. And if nobody else does, I'm gonna have to be okay with that because I'm not like I'm not a leader for those people. I'm a leader for the Lord. Yeah. And so if He's having me do something then I know that his word doesn't return void. And even if I'm like the first person to tell someone something, so they freak out about it, eventually that seed is going to grow, right? Mm -hmm. It might take someone else telling them something else later on down the road. And I never get to see that happen in my lifetime or whatever, but I just have to know that um, I'm doing what he is telling me to do. And that's all I can do. So. No, that's really good. I, I actually, I received a lot of that and that was really really good for me and good. probably other people too, but really, really hit me lately. Um, so you got this altar call that you're a part of and you have a triggered yes. event coming up and I know you yeah. got really cool speakers. I know some of the speakers I'd love for you to talk about the event, but I'd also love to talk about like why you're doing what you're doing with it because, um, you know, there's this, I, I believe, correct me if I'm, but I believe it's from like 18 to 25 year olds. Is that right? Yeah. So the, our ministry altar call is 18 to 25 year olds specifically, but the triggered event is for young adults. So it can be a little bit older. People who are in that life stage basically is what we're going after. So I don't want to put like a number on okay. it, but if, if you're in the life stage of a young adult, um, 
specifically young, young adult, <laughs> and you're like just stepping into leadership kind of roles, that's kind of who we're going after with this. And you got so. some cool speakers. I mean, you got Yaku Boyens, right? Yeah, Yaku. Michael McIntyre. Yeah. I love those Dr. guys. Dr. Robin Perry Brown. Um, a lot. We have 10 speakers. So yeah. That's exciting. And when it is, is it? It's September 22nd and 23rd. And it is called Triggered. So <laughs> it's funny that we're talking about being triggered you right? Know, as a leader and stuff. Um, yeah, really our heart with uh, just everything that we're doing is um, just helping Gen Z specifically step into who they are and just breaking down the barriers. And being triggered is a, honestly a really good thing. And so um, at this event, we're going to be talking about literally all the triggering to topics. You know, we're talking about politics, about business, creativity, sexuality, literally everything. Um, Pastor Ken Williams, one of the founders of the Change Movement, um, he used to be struggling with homosexuality, actually God delivered him from it. And he started a ministry helping other people step out of the LGBTQ uh, community and stuff. And so it's really amazing, but it's going to be triggering and offensive to people for sure. But I think that's a good thing um, because when you get triggered, it just reveals to you what's really going on in your heart. And so like when you feel offense or any of those things, it's just an opportunity for you to take it to the Lord and to be like, hey, what is going on with me? Like, what's that narrative that I'm looking at people with? And like, why can I not just be okay hearing something that I don't agree with? You know, and um, it's really beneficial. Yeah. That like the, I think the first time I heard the word triggered was I don't know, like five or six years ago, and it was related more like a politics things towards like the left or something yeah. or the right. They're like, oh, you're getting triggered because of some stupid meme or something mm -hmm. or like something said. And I, I like what you said, though, of like, it's good to be triggered because it's revealing something about you mm -hmm. that needs to be processed through. Yeah. Right. Like sure. you don't like why are you actually getting triggered in that event? Like, yeah, what what is stopping you from being rational? Why are you getting emotional? Because when I get triggered, I don't know about you, but like my my brain just like get like heated and like ah, ah I get like I get <laughs> yeah I get like not angry, but I get like very like ah. It's fight or flight. You go into fight or flight because um, well, there's a whole lot of science behind it. I mean, I love science, so I could go into. Well, it, talk but, about a little bit of it. I'm um, I'm really intrigued on it. Okay, so basically, you have what's called the ego. <laughs> I want to talk about brain science. Your ego is essentially this thing that your brain creates to keep you safe. So it creates this narrative um, that you learn. Basically, uh, your subconscious learns between the ages of zero and I would say like eight, but it really can go up to like 15. Um, basically, when you're in those years, everything that you're learning is going straight into the, sub the subconscious belief system. So if your parents told you you were worthless or if they um, mm. just maybe they were absent and so you your perception of it was that they didn't care about you, whatever it is, you then take that, that becomes a belief system about yourself. And then you take that through your entire life, unless you go back into your subconscious and kind of undo that stuff. So when you're getting triggered, it's, it's something is running into that ego belief where you have this belief of being worthless or not enough or have to achieve mm. or have to be liked or whatever it is. So a trigger is just basically saying somebody coming against that belief system and your brain is like, hold on, no, that's not true because here's all my evidence from when I was two or whatever. Um, and of course, this is all happening subconsciously. So let me just so to clarify so I understand. So there's basically there's walls in your brain that are getting knocked down and they're saying, no, no, we put these walls up to keep us safe, to keep us safe and protect mm -hmm. you. And as they're coming down, it's like, hey, if you let these walls come down, you're going to be exposed and you're going to yeah. be like shamed maybe or like so the, it's almost like your your ego is what you're calling it mm -hmm. is fighting against what needs to happen yeah. to get those walls down. That's like the yeah. vision that I kind of just saw of these walls being put up and, and kind of crash down. And it's, it's really interesting because I feel like I have layers of like ego and I don't know oh, if you have sure. thoughts of this of like, I feel like sometimes I'll have like a wall come down and I think I'm done with a situation. <laughs> and then I, and then I'm like, I'm thinking of something specific. I'm not going to get into the details, but I'm, I'm processing this as you're saying that I'm like, Oh my gosh. I have a few more walls, I feel like, of my pride and ego on, on a situation right now where I thought I was done with it and I'm not. Yeah. And, I, and it's almost like my defense mechanism tricked me and said, hey, you did get healed. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. I mean, 
So the Lord is so good that he knows what you can handle, right? Mm. Like he, I know you're saying, give me all of it right now, but I'm going to tell you, even if you go through a ton of stuff, you're going to get to a point where you're like, wow, I'm done. And then next year you're going to be like, wait, <laughs> that's how I feel every day. I'm like, I'm yeah. like, I ask for everything at once. And I'm like, no, it's been like 13 months now since I said that. And it's been like the craziest 13 months. Yeah. And I'm like, it's just getting harder and harder. So yeah, he yeah. didn't give me all at once, but if, but I'm pretty sure he gave it to me back to back to back to back to back. But he like, <laughs> let me get through this one. And then we start another one. Yeah. Well, I mean, so there's a parable in, that Jesus told where they throw out the seed, right? And then um, it grows, but tares grow up with it. And so the servant asked the master, well, should we tear, should we pull out these tares? And the master says, no, because if you pull out the tares, you're going to pull out the good seed too. Mm. And so I think that God sometimes lets these things stay in us because there's something else that we're, we're learning at the same time. And eventually we're going to get to a place where it's like, okay, I can let go of this ego. I can let go of this pride. I can let go of the lies that have gotten me, you know, to this point, because now I'm in a situation where I'm strong enough in the truth that it's not going to negatively affect me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause God isn't going to pull something out of you just cause you want it. If he knows it's going to be detrimental. So I think sometimes you get left with stuff that you have to then deal with a year from now or two years from now or 10 years from now, um, even when you thought that you had worked through it. Because that's happened to me. I mean, I've been doing inner healing. I've always been about personal development, right? So even before I was saved, I was like, let's get rid of all this, whatever, <laughs> all the triggering things, you know? So I've been doing this for probably like eight years. Um, and there's stuff that I went through at the very beginning that's coming back up for me now. And it's like, wait. I, I thought I dealt with my worthiness issue. Yeah. And then I thought I dealt with it again when I got saved. And then I dealt with it again three years after I got saved. You know what I mean? But it's just, there's there's so much in us and there's so many situations. I mean, 28 years of my life, I've had this narrative of I'm worthless. It's not going to go away in a weekend. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just continually diving into that and like slowly, slowly, slowly taking off layers, you know? Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Like when you find something your brain is, that, that needs a change. It's you've been hardwired so many times, like those neurons mm -hmm. that connect. And then when you're trying to break that bridge, like I'm trying to break a couple of bridges right now. And it's like, it is not easy. I know logically this makes no sense, but like my emotions and my feelings do not change, but I'm like, this needs to change though. <laughs> but like, it'll like, when I talk about it, I'm like, I don't, I'm like stuck. And I've, I've talked to this with my wife, Leah, a lot about the different areas that we're both stuck in. And we like look at it and we kind of laugh because we're like, it doesn't make sense. Like, cause our brains can be like, I'm not stuck in that area. Like, right. And we're like, I'm not yeah. stuck in that area. And it's like, that's easy for me. But it's like this thing that I'm going through is like, of just trying to figure this stuff out is like, oh my gosh, like, why can't I get past this stuckness? And I've judged a lot of people in my life based on my experience, what I'm good at. And I go, mm -hmm. I don't understand. And a lot of it actually is mental health or depression or feeling yeah. bad about yourself because I, I didn't I didn't have a lot of that and so I'm like I don't understand why you can't just be like get over yourself sometimes and man I got smacked on the head on that one like I was so wrong on that yeah and and then I got my issues and you know someone's coming to me like what are you talking about like why can't why and I'm like oh my gosh that's what I did to some people and so when you're stuck like there's genuinely trauma and stuff that's got to be healed. And I didn't realize that for the longest time. I just thought it was like going back to what you said, if it's up to, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And I yeah. had that attitude and I was like, no, Holy spirit. I got this one. Take the bench. Yeah. on the quarterback, man, that has messed up my life so bad. So and many he times. Will, he will let you do it. That's the thing is he's <laughs> like, you want to, okay, have fun. I'll sit here in the backseat and wait for you to crash. And then I'll, just resuscitate you because he is that good but. isn't that i know isn't that just such a loving father though of like yeah okay like you can go learn your lesson yeah. go do you i'll be yeah. here though the whole time i'm not going anywhere <laughs> like because yeah. me as a parent i feel like sometimes i'm like oh, i'm out like you figure that out i'm not like i <laughs> want to do that <laughs> yeah and i'm like they're not being an idiot as much as we are idiots to the lord i feel like and and it really me as a father really learns patience is like if the lord has that much patience for us yeah. I like, there's no reason I can't have patience with my kids. Cause I know me personally is a big idiot all the time. And he's always waiting there and he's always patient and he's always loving. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like that is just, it's amazing at how many times we can fail and go back. And he's like, I wanted to do this with you all along. And I was waiting for you. Mm -hmm. 
you weren't waiting yeah. for me. I was waiting for you. We were, I was ready to go down this path with you all along. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, geez. Yeah. I think this is an area that the church historically, I'll just say not any specific church, but the church in general has not done super well and they haven't pre like prepared their people. Cause I think that there's so many like practical ways to do things and the church trying to kind of over spiritualizes things. And so when it comes to like, oh, just get over it. Like, oh, just pray more. Oh, like you should just be giving that to Jesus. Like all of those things is what we've been told. Right. But it's like, okay, but how do I actually, how do I actually let it go? Like, how do I actually give it to Jesus? How come when I say, okay, God, I'm mm. giving this to you, the emotions don't go away. And it's because there's actually, um, there's a difference between knowing something in your head and actually believing it in your heart. And that's why it says, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and then you'll be saved. It's your heart. Because your heart in the science level, right? Like this is what I'm studying in my <laughs> in my PhD, but your heart actually has a different nervous system than your brain. And it sends more signals mm. to your brain than your brain sends to your entire body. And so Wait, if you're- say, say that again. So your heart has a separate nervous system, its own nervous system. Like actually biologically. Yes, biologically. I do not know this. Yeah, most people don't. So they think your brain is where your consciousness is and you control everything with your brain, right? So your thought. That's- only partially true because if your heart doesn't believe what your brain is saying, your heart will override your brain mm. because your heart is where your subconscious belief, your emotions, all of that stuff is. So I can say in my head, I'm totally healthy. I'm totally healed. I am loved, all those things, but my heart might not believe it because of, you know, whatever situation, whatever subconscious belief. And so my heart's like, mm, no. And so I'm going to still operate under the heart belief that I'm not healthy or I'm not whatever you know? So, um, yeah, it's just really interesting because people don't know that. And so they try and muscle their way through with like thought, and then it never actually gets healed in the heart. I've never heard that yeah. ever that, that biologically we have a different nervous system with the heart. Yeah. I mean, that makes so much yeah. sense because I'll say things all the time and I'm like, why is this not changing? Yeah. Like I'll verbally like be praying and asking God. And I'm like, I can see this now, like internally, I never really believed it. Mm -hmm. I was just saying it because I was like, that's what you just do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's wild, isn't it? And that's why in Proverbs, it says, guard your heart because from it flows the wellsprings of life. Mm. Like li literally, <laughs> like there's nothing coincidental in the Bible. He didn't say heart when he meant brain. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just really interesting. And I love it. I love learning this stuff. Yeah. I've, this I've stuff. had a lot of people say like, I've heard this a lot of like, do you think from your head or do you think from your heart? And now I, I understand that a little bit differently of because you almost like thinking like you're, you're it's, those neurons are not neurons. What did you call it? Uh, nervous system. The but, nervous yeah. system. Like if you're coming from your heart, you're actually then kind of thinking. Yeah. In a sense. I always just like your heart was like you're just just feelings and emotions. But the way that you said it is, it's a little bit more than that. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. So I kind of think of it and I don't know, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if this is technically correct, but how I think of it is like your brain is conscious thinking. And I think your heart is the subconscious. And so when you have a subconscious belief, like it's kind of like the thermostat to your life. Mm. So, you know, a thermostat, if you change it to 72, right, it might fluctuate a little bit like 69, 74, but it always is trying to go back to 72. That's your subconscious belief system too. So like, even if my, my brain is saying, no, I am worth it. No, I can do this. No, I can, you know, build this business or make all this money. If my subconscious belief isn't up there, then it's always going to be pulled back down to my subconscious belief. So you might be able to muscle your way to a successful business, but it's going to implode if you don't work on your belief system. Mm. And you can watch that happen in the world like over and over and over again. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of a few situations and people and different things that I've gone through where that's so evident now and clear of what happened yeah. and I missed it completely and didn't understand it. Yeah. Everything's about belief. Yeah. Cause Everything. I know they've believed it here, but now I'm like, I don't, they didn't believe it here. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. It's wild. <laughs> wow. What's good though, is there are like actual things that you can do to like get into your heart space and change your subconscious belief. Yeah. I, I want to hear your thoughts on this. So Leah just went to, I don't know what it was, some kind of like healing counseling thing yesterday. And she had this really cool thing where they, they talked to her about um, your brain, your heart and your gut and how you think. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like this, but it's a little different. And, and they said like, it's, it's more about how do you react to something? Do you use your brain? Do you use your heart or do you use your gut? And they're saying that her, 
that she uses her brain, but they don't believe she was, she's actually wired that way. She got that from her parents Oh yeah. because how they, how they were. And they were asking these things. And so she, she was explaining that they were telling her like the brain filters things out. And so when it gets to your heart, all of the stuff, all the stuff is not there. And so it's hard to make a decision sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you, wherever you're naturally, how you react like me, I'm like a gut person. Same. I don't even know how I explain what I do. I don't know why I do what I do. I'm just like, I just know. Yeah. And I, and and people get are like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, I just, I just, I just go like that. The best CEOs in the world are gut thinkers because the reason is I actually learned this and it made me feel really good about myself <laughs> is that they have a really, usually a widespread knowledge. And so because they have this widespread knowledge, their neurons are firing so fast. They're usually really smart as well. And so, um, they're pulling information from 50 different sources all at one time and they have a gut reaction of oh because of all this information this is what i need to do but yeah. they don't know that they're doing that and so they can't explain it so when I, me married to justin who's all brain all logic yep. he's like explain to me why you're making this decision i legitimately can't i'm just like i don't know why but i know that this is the right decision the, i have this is so this is how i explain it to people because i i you know i i don't know how to explain it is is I have like 50 tabs open in my brain that are going on and I can, and I'm gathering information and they, they're not necessarily active, but they're stored. And so I'm getting people telling me this, this and throughout the week or the day or the month. And then when a decision needs to be made, I can just like take yeah. all those files and within milliseconds know exactly kind of what I need to do based on information that was told for me from a long time. And it just like filters it way out and says, this is your percentage chance to like be successful or win based on the stuff that you've been told in the past. And then like gives me an envelope and says, do this. Like that's how my brain works. And yeah, so when people that's like, good, for sure, <laughs> like from like a CEO or decision-making standpoint, like really is like, just get me the information and then I will tell you what I needs to be done. And it's yeah. and it makes no sense to most people. They're right. like, how can you even get to that? It's like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't have time to explain it. It's kind of like what you said about yeah. the general and the foot shoulders. Like you can't take time all to explain everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and they won't understand it even if you exactly. tell them because you're just yeah. not wired that way. Yeah. And it's funny you said that because I think you can relate to my tabs that are like open, yeah. but they're not really active. They're just like, yeah, it's that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't think about it at all. And it just no. happens like in a second. But this is also why it's so important to deal with your ego, because if you're having all of this stuff, stuff happen as a gut thinker and you have this lens, like this perception of, you know, something negative or whatever, your gut reaction is not going to be on point or you won't listen to your gut reaction because you have fear or because you have a belief system or whatever it is. So like not dealing with those things can actually be can cause you to make really bad decisions yeah, as a gut thinker. I, I've made a lot of those in the last two years, yeah. like a lot. And it's cost me tremendously Yeah, because I just went like this. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I understand completely what you're saying. And so I let my ego get way in front of me way too many times. Yeah. And the, and this is interesting. I, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because we're a lot alike and I don't know if we are in this way is I tend to overreact and go completely the opposite way. So like, say for instance, if I'm way on the ego, I'll go way like the false humility almost. Like, I'll just go the other- That's still ego, the, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> no, no, I know, it is. But what I'll do is, is I'll be, if I'm aggressive, then I'll be completely passive. Oh. it's it, That's what I more meant. Like if, if I'm, so it's like, okay. if I find out I'm wrong, I'm like, and I accept that I'm wrong. Like, I'm okay. But the problem that I have or the it, not pro issue is, is I'll pendulum swing too far unhealthy. Oh, I see. And I'll be like, I can't do this anymore because if I do that, I'm going to make the same thing. So I need to like take a step back and yeah. I need to like check my ego so much. I'll, I'll just like, I won't, I won't do anything sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I get like that per se. I get like that if it's like years, years long of the same thing happening. Like if I'm like really going after what I want for like years at a time. And then it's been like bad or like I've made a string of bad decisions or any of that stuff. Then I do get a little bit like, okay, F this, like whatever, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I think as you, as you get healthier and just more like just understanding why you react the way that you react, you kind of get like, 
okay, I see how that was bad. This is what's right versus like that pendulum swing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So just as you keep growing and like learning about your own emotions, honestly, and all of those kinds of things, I think it's going to get easier for you to just step right back into alignment instead of going to the opposite side. Yeah. I've gotten a lot better lately, but that's been a big challenge of mine. Yeah. But well, it's been fun. I'm yeah. glad you came in. This is a last minute yeah. <laughs> impromptu. It was. And uh, I think we'll have to have you back. I have a couple other ideas I'd like to talk to you about for sure. that we didn't get into. And yeah, I'm excited for your triggered event. Yeah. It's going to be very awesome. excited and excited that you're in the ministry of Gen Z taking that leadership role. I think that's very needed in today's society that people need to be mentoring people. And so, yeah, I just want to honor you and be very proud of you as a friend Thank you. that you're doing that because you have to sacrifice and take time out of your schedule to do that. And not everyone's willing to do that. So. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. Yeah, it was good. To finally record one of our conversations. I know thousands <laughs> of them. These are just our normal conversations. That's right. Good deal.